Hey, Laura J. E. Hamilton here with my self-publishing school mug because, damn it, I'm going to do this. I just got to get it out. And I keep getting distracted by wanting to share insights and build the email series that's going to help get me out in front of people and to be able to engage the material that I've been stewing on for all this time and then it's just like why wait and sometimes it's like if you let your baby out too soon and expose it to other people it gets sick and dies and then other times you let it out and then it grows stronger and develops social skills and it's just that much better for having had the experience. So as the parent of a creative child, it's really up to our discretion. And that is the thing that we have to realize. We are all parents to our own self-image. We are the ones that have to be on that hero's journey that takes us from home in the comfort zone and then around into the adventure and then back home with the experience the adventure gave us that helps us share a perspective that no one at home nor you before you went had even ever considered. There is a world and wealth of opportunity and potential that is available outside of our realm of awareness until we expose ourselves to more. And the more we expose ourselves to, the more possibility we know is possible and then the more that we're willing to try because we know of how well it will pay when we actually get that thing that we're working towards. Now, I have created a list of 10 New Agey spiritual practices that will help you with emotion management and self-regulation. And yoga is my very first one on the list because it is such a sacred practice. I've started going to a yoga studio recently compared to a gym slash club. And the biggest difference that I notice is how in the studio, it really is a sacred practice. Everyone shows up and it's a whole bunch of adults on the ground, on a mat, waiting for the teacher to show up and give them guidance and instruction because we all crave being led back home to ourselves into our body to get the movement going, the flow. We want to know that we're not in this on our own and yoga is a great way to do that. Other modalities within the same realm are Tai Chi, Qigong, martial arts, karate, anything that really helps us understand that it's more of a mental game than a physical game is really, really useful. And while I don't really have much experience with it, though I suspect that will change as my circle changes soon, um, but golf is actually another mind game that's really, really good to master because if you can master your mind and then play the game like you would with life, Monopoly 2, strategy is everything. And it's really about getting in charge of your inner emotional landscape in order to make rational decisions in line with where you're going. Like chess, you're setting up for a few moves in advance, you know? Breathing techniques. The breath of fire is a really great one. And the breath of fire is basically when you're breathing through your nose really fast and then you're basically... Uh, breathing into your belly and then your hand is rising and your chest obviously is too but it's actually coming from a guttural but you're doing that for like three to five minutes I'm pretty sure it is it's a long time I'm not overly acquainted with that practice either, but I realize how beneficial it is because the solar plexus 
is your willpower and self-esteem account essentially within your energetic system and so by actually breathing into it you're stimulating it and what gets stimulated gets excited and what gets excited can be delighted and have a fun time experiencing itself in a world that is waiting for us to step into our best selves and create the life of our dreams a life beyond our wildest dreams in fact we are the ones that we have been waiting for and it's by using the tools that we have access to that we really fill the soul kit of our emotional system with enough to be able to defend ourselves and also to be able to progress forward and go on defense and attack if necessary to be able to get what is ours which is what our heart sings for and if there isn't such a thing existing already then it's our responsibility to create it and bring it into being that's just how it goes Chakra rebalancing, visualizations and processes. Understanding the chakra system in the first place is a huge asset. If you're not quite sure, I'm going to create a video on that specifically so you can check out the chakras and how inspired ideas are disseminated through them. And then you can really master the creative process from a functional way animal cards and oracle card messenger cards um i love these things and i use them all the time for myself to be honest these three decks particularly and then i have a goddess deck i have a tarot deck i have an angel deck as well i'm looking to get some other decks i love decks they're just so brilliant and then you build a connection with the cards and then it's like the cards tell a story without even having to insert any other words hardly. I've literally told a whole few minute story just by flipping cards over one after another that had all fallen out. It was amazing. I sometimes do card readings that just blow me away to be honest and I don't do them publicly and so nobody really knows about that but that's a little fun fact about me and now I'm starting to offer them professionally too. It's nearly a hundred bucks for a half hour uh, just because ultimately if you are an entrepreneur and have paid so much to be able to do this and then personalize that I say so if I've paid so much to know what I know to be able to do what I do it's like when Mozart drew a little sketch for a woman in a coffee shop that spotted him and was like, oh my god, Mozart, will you draw me something? And he just sketches something, 30 seconds, hands it over, that'll be a million dollars, ma'am. And she says, what? What? What do you mean a million dollars? Like, that took you 30 seconds. And he says, yes, but it took me 30 years to be able to do that in 30 seconds. We have to honor somebody's expertise and what they did to be able to do what they do. We have to understand what it takes to become published, to stick with the process, and the support that we need to be willing to get in order to help us achieve the goals that we have for ourselves. Mentorship was not listed on here, but it certainly is one, absolutely. I am part of three online communities, at least, that I am a member of because I've taken trainings with them. And then I'm part of two gyms locally. I'm joining a local spiritualist church as well that is really amazing. And I've known about it for over a decade, but I'm now finally being drawn to join to commit to be part of something so that when I leave people know it's like oh where'd Laura go you know I've got my videos on my channel here so they would know if they watched but ultimately it's quite nice to belong to a group of people that actually care about you and that's why family is so important and if you don't have a relationship with your family realize that your souls chose to travel together because each of you brought a lesson that was meant to help liberate the other soul's awareness and consciousness by helping them see something from a different light they wouldn't have seen without your mirror. 
because we are mirrors to each other and what you like in me are things that you like about yourself and have accepted, but the things that you dislike about me, and just as I say that, the screen goes black, ironically enough, but anything that you dislike about me are simply things that you have repressed, suppressed, depressed, compressed, tried to pretend don't exist within your internal emotional system. You are great beyond measure, my friend, but what you don't like in me are simply things that you have tried to say you don't have within you, but you do, my darling. And it's not a bad thing, and there's no judgment required. It's just really about realizing we have every aspect within us because we are multidimensional beings with polarity as our experience to go through this life as. We know what we are by what we are not and vice versa. It's really important to realize that we don't have to judge ourselves when we have a negative response or reaction, but it's about realizing that we can do better next time and then choose to, you know? You know is a subliminal programming. When I say you know like this, it's actually getting your agreement and your buy-in without me looking like I'm coercing you into anything. And I've already did it to you at least twice that I'm aware of, which means that if you are still with me, you've likely agreed with me twice, which means you're more likely to continue agreeing with me because that's our human nature. That's called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And it's really important to understand that it is a manipulation tactic. And if we can understand what is being used against us, against us, then we can protect ourselves a lot better than if we were trying to do it at the same time. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy as well, CBT. Talk Therapies. There are so many. Dosing, Pendulums and Truth, okay. Here's where my mom's like, I'm out of here. This is too freaky. All right, pendulums. I am not a witch. I do not subscribe to Wiccan, Wickery, Witchery, any of the occults. However, I do believe that we are energy and that there are a lot of pagan traditions that are simply reflections of natural laws, and I agree with that. So I feel like instead of dismissing everything out of hand simply because one thing doesn't agree with it, it's really about tuning into your body. And if you are going to allow one thing to be the deciding factor, let that be your body and how things feel to you. Also realize that because we are largely water and energy, then we are able to actually transfer energy and movement into things, and pendulums are a great way to sense that. So I'm not moving my hand at all, but I'm going to just say, show me yes. And so like normal, it went into a clockwise position, and then show me no. Isn't it magical how it just changes like that? And then it goes counterclockwise. And then will you work for me? And then will your answers be my greatest and highest good? These things you always ask in order to make sure that it is of the greatest and highest good. And then when it is for sure of the greatest and highest good, then you'll be able to go for it. Now, what you'll also notice is that I have a necklace on that I also sometimes use for dousing as a pendulum too, because why not? I have it on me, it's handy, and if I'm in a conversation with somebody and I just want that extension, that visible proof of what I'm asking in terms of a closed question, yes or no answer, a pendulum, either one that you wear or one that you have, are very handy tools, especially for anyone that is open to maybe even looking a little strange for the sake of really tuning into higher level energies and frequencies. 
EFT, so EFT emotional freedom technique is tapping. So you actually have, we have meridian points along the body. This is called the karate chop point where you start and you basically frame a story that you're working to release and you frame it with, even though I feel this way, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I feel like this, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I love and accept myself anyway. So you go through that three times of putting in a real, by what feels real statement, and then you actually go through and you tap. And you tap on the crown and you say, even though I feel this way, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I don't like how that happened, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though, even though, even though, even though, even though, even though and then back and you just go through a round of tapping like this until you get to the point where you return to the karate chop point and then you can actually start reprogramming yourself so you're actually literally working with the neuro networks with the meridian points. You're actually saying, hey, pay attention to here. 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 Here, 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 here. Your body is chasing and it's just like, hey, what's going on? I feel you touching me. What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> we have to get ourselves back into our body, into our energy systems we have to realize that energy is playing with the other energy all the time and so by actually using the meridian points to help us we can reprogram ourselves intentionally rather than just creating unintentionally access bars consciousness now that's a modality that i trained in which there's 36 meridian points on the head that that modality actually uses and then there are different positions that you can place your hands on the person's head or that I can do that basically first starts by doing energy pulls and then starts reharmonizing the body by using these meridian points in a similar way to the EFT but this one is more focused on abundance and clearing blocks and restrictions and stories and programs and asking how could it get any better than this. So really believing in possibility rather than reality and what's showing up. Access bar as consciousness is a super cool modality and then there's lots of different specializations that you can do. Like I even specialized in vision and so I don't know necessarily whether it works super huge because this is the thing about all of these modalities. They're just tools. And if you don't use the tool, then you don't really get good at the tool. So you don't know how good you could be with it if you actually practiced it and got super good. Like my teacher for Access Bar Consciousness is Karen Leslie out of Kitchener, Waterloo. And she swears by this. And so it just works for her amazing. And she does all kinds of crazy, amazing, cool things. And I go back just because I want to connect with her even more so than the modality that I'm connecting with her with. So it's really about choosing your leader and also your modality as part of that and how it feels within your emotional system, like we said before. Muneki writes, now this is a form of Peruvian shamanism that actually came over with Alberto Villoldo. So he's one of the contributors for this mystical shaman oracle deck, which is absolutely beautiful. The cards are stunning, and I just flipped to the hunter, which I was watching a dating video earlier, and it was saying about how on an instinctual level, men love to be hunters. They want to be able to pursue their prey, and if you are a single lady looking to be pursued by a man, then it's really about making yourself a mystery so that then they have to chase you. 
was the recommendation, and it's totally spot on. Because before the dawn of agriculture, we hunted in the forest to feed our kin. The hunter never takes more than what the village needs to survive, often taking only one creature, the good kill. He is a master tracker who knows which path to follow to find success. So the hunter knows how to achieve the goal because they listen to the earth, they listen to the ground, they listen to the forest, they listen to nature. They listen. And it's an art that we have lost, but if we actually think of the Chinese symbol for to attentively listen, you've got the eyes, the open heart, undivided attention to give respect to the speaker, you've got the ears to listen, and then you've got the higher self connection that actually helps you connect to all that is understanding we came from the same place, we go back to the same space, and we share the same space while we're here for as long as we're here. So if we're all just energy and we're all here right now together, why not learn to play nice together? Just a theory. The Peruvian shamanism of the Mune Key rites are 13 different rites, I believe it is, that are seeds of empowerment that get planted within your luminous light body and that helps you in changing how you age. It helps in the BS that you allow to rule your inner realm. It really helps you come back home to yourself in a more organized way and really just have those offerings to be able to provide at the end of your journey compared to at the end of the harvest season you have nothing to harvest because you didn't plant anything. So it's really being intentional about what you're planting in your energetic field and then really cultivating those through your experiences that are coming there to really help you grow those experiences faster. Now Diksha, this is also called a oneness blessing and a friend of mine uh, locally, she doesn't really do them anymore uh, but there's lots of groups that do happen. I know when I lived in the UK, uh, there, there's a UK group of Diksha practitioners and people that go to India to the Oneness Temple. And it's really people that are aligned to the vibration and lifestyle of inner peace and harmony who really want to be the embodied beings that are able to hold more light. And so Diksha is actually receiving blessings from people that are trained to offer these blessings. And if you ever come across any Diksha offerings in your area, I would suggest going and having that experience because it's just really delightful for your soul. And I don't know whether it is hugely helpful but I know that I've went to several throughout the years and all of it has helped me become who I am today and embody energy in the way that I do now. So I think all of it has helped and the Diksha is something to experience for yourself and see what you think. Emotion code? Now, this is one that I have a really good girlfriend in England that actually practices the emotion code. Zora Tolmondeli is my friend's name who lives in Worcester. And she is an amazing shaman. She has done some journeys for me and retrieved some really powerful information, which uh, shamanic journeying, uh, they're not of the same ilk, but... Zora Tomondoli. She's worth looking up. Uh, the emotion code is really actually breaking down heart walls and barriers that are keeping us from being able to experience and express ourselves fully in this lifetime. Because as long as we have barriers around the heart, that biomagnetic field that it naturally produces isn't able to reach us far and we get that reverberation effect of hitting up against a wall and feeling confined. So we don't really need to experience that anymore if we're willing to let it go. So that's really what this teaching is all about. And then the shamanic journeying, that's actually going into the underworlds or the higher worlds, the upper worlds, 
or the middle worlds. And the shaman actually journeys on your soul's behalf to retrieve soul fragments of where you've left parts of yourself in a past memory, whether in this lifetime or a previous lifetime. And the shaman is basically collecting your pieces. You're not broken. You were just displaced. Your energy has went elsewhere. You just need to call it back to yourself, but you didn't have the awareness that you needed to do that, so you didn't do it. And now that you do know, now you can, and now you can feel more whole and complete in the present moment. And Emotion Code is really great at helping you stand in your power by embracing more of who you are and letting your love fall out and go out into the world in a bigger way. Now, neuro-linguistic programming I mentioned, and then cognitive behavioral therapy is going into the stories and really unpacking the root cause of the surface story that we seem to be obsessing about. So these are 10 to 12 uh, different um, healing modalities, techniques that you can use to really call yourself back to the present moment. And I would really highly suggest you choose a couple of them and intentionally try them out over the next few weeks. Uh, Julia Cameron has a really phenomenal workbook uh, that is called The Artist's Way, and it's a 12-week course to recovering and discovering your inner artist. Mm -hmm. And her claim is that a lot of the entrepreneurs like myself that have struggled to finish writing a book and courses and putting myself out there is it's because as an artist it's like I'm putting out a body of work it's like I want it to be good for years like this is the foundational principles of my legacy and I really want to make sure that it's good but sometimes good enough is good enough and that's really the lesson that I've been learning I continue to learn and so really what I'm working to do this week, this first week of July, a year after I left Movadi and intended to get this done then, a year later I'm in a different spot, but I'm in a similar position only because I haven't moved myself forward because the more weight we leave in the not now moments is the longer wait time we have. W E I, G, H, T, the more weight we have in the past, the longer we have to W, A, I, T in the present. So really be understanding that if there is a delay on what you've been able to attract that you really, really want, that you really, 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 really want, <laughs> then it's important about really thinking about where your soul fragments are so that you can call those back. So let me know what this message means to and for you. And I would love to know what other modalities you have added to this list. I'm sure Reiki is going to uh, be one that people submit for sure. Um, one that I'm also certified in is soul realignment, which is accessing the Akashic records to help you understand who you are at soul level so that you can bring more of your authentic creative style into how you do life and business. And then also, if you have made past life or past this life choices that were not aligned with who you authentically are, your soul may be keeping some of those lessons open to remind you not to do those things again. So if that is the case by clearing those, it will help liberate you to be more fully present in the moment to really make the most of what you have come here to do with your life. So I would love to be able to help you with that and you can apply for a reading on my website and please comment below what this message means to and for you and I'll very much look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks so much. Laura Jai. Namaste. The light in me honors, the light in you.